Hey everyone, it's Bruce from FaithWorks here and today I want to warn you about a condition that has inflicted you and the condition is fatal. There is no vaccine for it and it inflicts every person. There is no escaping from it and you cannot self-isolate yourself from it. Disease affects the body and or the mind and many diseases have cures and vaccines. But this condition affects your body and mind, but it goes more than that. It also affects your spirit or your soul. It does not have a vaccine, but there is one and only one cure. Would you take the cure? Knowing that you've been infected by this condition and knowing that the only way to survive is by taking the cure. The condition I'm talking about doesn't have a long medical name, nor is it recognized in the medical fields. Nevertheless, it is still a very serious condition. I'm talking about sin. Sin is a condition that has affected all of us. In the Bible, there's a book called Romans. And in the book of Romans, it says this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Not one of us is immune to sin. We have all sinned. What is sin? Sin is simply going against God's laws, his commandments, which we've all done. We've all lied or we've stolen or lusted or hated. We've all rejected God and his ways. Now, in the same book of Romans in the Bible, just three chapters later, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says this, For the wages of sin is death. Now, that's only the first half of that verse, and I'm going to get to the second half a bit later. I just want to look at that first half right now. What is a wage? A wage is what you have earned, what you are entitled to as a result of what you have done. You go to work, you do your job, you get a wage because you did your job. It's your entitlement because you did that job. So... We have all sinned and we have all earned the entitlement of death, the wage of death because of our sin. Let me tell you this very clearly. Sin is fatal and it will kill you. And there's nothing you can do by yourself to stop it. Being good, good works, being kind, that doesn't stop the penalty of sin. The crime still has a penalty to pay. You know, it's like a murderer going to court and facing the judge in, in the court of law and then expecting him to let him go free because of, of the good works that the murderer has done or is now doing. It doesn't work that way. There is still a penalty to pay for the crime. Sin has a penalty to pay. Now, the second half of that verse in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, gives us hope. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, on one hand, we have sin and death, but out of his love, but God, out of his love and grace for us, pays the penalty of death so that we can walk free. The cure is Jesus. Now, I petition you today to take the cure. Don't let sin take your life. Give your life to Jesus. Every day, your physical body gets one day closer to leaving this earth, one day closer to the grave. That means your spirit gets one day closer to the other side of this physical life. Where do you want to spend eternity? In heaven with God who loves and cares for you? Or in a godless place of hatred and pain known as hell? 
You need to prepare today for your eternity. Tomorrow, it might be too late. So how do you prepare? How can you be sure that you will go to heaven? You must accept the cure for your sin. You must accept the fact that Jesus Christ paid for your sin. Somebody has to pay for your sin. You must accept Jesus. He is the only one that died for you so that you don't have to pay the penalty for your sin. He paid it for you. The penalty had to be paid and Jesus paid it for you. He rose again so you can live in freedom, serving him with boldness and without fear. To accept Jesus, the Bible says this. And again, it's in the book of Romans. This time we're looking at chapter 10, verse 9. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved? Saved? Saved from what? Saved from the penalty of your sin. In the book of of John in the Bible, chapter 3, verse 16, very well-known verse, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is the gift of God. This is the cure for sin. Now remember that scripture in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says that if that you need to confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? This means to make him Lord means that you have chosen to follow him. You need to confess that with your mouth. You need to speak it out. It goes on to say, that verse goes on to say, and believe in your heart. This believing requires trust, a sticking to, a following. Do this and you will be saved, is what the Bible says. It's about repentance. Repentance is about remorse and regret for the times you've turned away from God. Remorse and regret for your sin. It's about turning away from your lifestyle and turning to him let me pray with you now because there may be people that would like to do that right now there's people that's listening to this and you've been going to church for a long time you've been involved in church and 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 right now you're questioning the whole thing have you ever really given your life to jesus do you really trust him is your hope really in him then right now i want you to confess with your mouth that jesus is lord i want you to believe in your heart that he died and rose for you and i'm going to pray with you and as I pray you feel free to open your mouth and as you open your mouth you feel free to ask God to forgive you invite him into your life and and declare that you wish to follow him and you will be saved today and you will be certain of heaven on the on the other side of eternity let me pray, Father, right now for every person listening. Holy Spirit, minister into their lives as people and you're listening. And as you've been listening, listening, you've been feeling convicted. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts, but he also counsels and comforts. And right now I'm going to ask that he comforts you as he shows you the way to Jesus. Father, right now, those that are listening that want to come to know you. Father, I ask that they will come and repent of their way of life. They will ask for forgiveness of their sins. They will turn to you and they will discover the salvation through you. They will discover the cure for their sin. Father, forgive them. Forgive us as your people. Forgive your church for what we've done, the times we've turned our backs upon you, Father. Lord God, come afresh on us we love you father and father we want to thank you for sending your son jesus to die for us god bless you amen now before i go in closing let me ask you once more are you preparing for your eternity see we can be busy preparing for things that happen or might happen to us on this earth but let's not forget to make those preparations for what happens after this physical life. 
don't leave it any longer. Hey, if you'd like to know more about how to prepare, if you'd like to know more about giving your life to Jesus, down at the bottom of the screen about here somewhere, there should be a website, findjesus.com.au or findjesus.net. Dot au that's findjesus.com.au go to that website it's got a, it's got some information there that you can look at to work at how to give your life to Jesus God bless you and see you next time